Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda and today I'm going to be doing the booktube newbie tag. I understand that um, I'm not really a newbie per se. I've been doing this for a couple months, but it's been less than a year. So in my mind, I'm still quite new. And I realized that you guys don't know a whole lot about like my specific preferences and things like that. You just know that I really like Six of Crows and All for the Game and Akatar. <laughs> so I figured this was be this would be like a a fun little like about me kind of deal. So let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I did want to show you guys was my new like bookshelf setup that you can kind of see behind me. I'm no longer sitting on my couch. Rest in peace, my Porter Anzis flag. It's still there. Don't get me wrong. It's just over there now. Um, so my bookshelf is kind of set up in a cool way. You can also see the golden hour light. Oh, it's beautiful. So on this bookshelf, we have all of my Sarah J. Mass books. On this bookshelf right here, we have my fairy loot books on this side. And then behind me, you can't see it, are books that I bought at a bookstore. Just kind of random books. Down here, you can't really see it down there, are all of my Caffeine and Legend books. And then behind it are my uh, my Owl Crate books. Up here, we have my, these are the Cruel Prince books. And then next to it is the Grisha verse. Underneath it is a Lumicrate books. And then all of my Dragon Age books. So in this bottom shelf down here that you can't see at all is my Book of the Month books and my Lit Joy books. On my little cart right here, these are books that I am borrowing from a friend or if I ever get library books that I'm borrowing from the library books that I do not own. These books right here are books that I am going to read this month, physical books that I own that I'm going to read in the upcoming months. And down here are books that I plan on talking about in the video. I thought this was easy to grab and if I need to, this thing has wheels so I can move it towards me. Yeah, so I thought this would just be kind of cool to show you guys and then in a later video, maybe sometime in November or December, I'm going to show you guys what I use online to keep track of all of my books, where they are, my video ideas, and kind of my book tracking systems and everything that I do track about my books, shipments, book clubs, things like that. I think it would just be kind of fun just to show you guys and I, you know, made some of them, some of them I borrowed from other creators with obviously their permission. And so yeah, we'll get into that later. So for the book talk newbie tag, there are 10 question, 11 questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. I mostly started this channel because I wanted an outlet to just talk about books that wasn't my boyfriend or some of my best friends because I just kind of felt like I was bothering them. If you were to ask them, they would be like, no, of course she's not bothering us. Um, but I think deep down, I was bothering my boyfriend a little bit. You know, there's just only so much I can tell him before he just kind of tunes it out, which is fine. Because sometimes he talks to me about things like Mortal Kombat. Where there's only so much he can tell me before I just kind of start glazing over. So I just thought it would be a cool creative outlet. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about books with people who might care, might listen. I don't know. I'm not really doing it for like fame or anything. I just wanted a place to kind of talk. And I, you know... I sit at my desk and I sit in my car and I talk to myself like I'm in a video anyways. When I was younger, I used to pretend like I was on a cooking show to nobody. And so now this just somebody might be paying attention. I don't know. I just think it's fun. And I like talking about things and books and maybe one day I'll expand outside of books. 
maybe into video games, which I think would be a lot of fun. We'll see, though. I think this question is actually kind of hard to answer. I think trying to be unique is really difficult. Uh, maybe that is just my lack of creativity, but when it comes to things like YouTube, I think you need to try and find a good balance between unique and also like popular because people want to hear about popular stuff. So like we're going to take an example, fourth wing. People are going to watch videos about fourth wing, but at the same time, there's so many videos about fourth wing. Like, you know, they got, they have so many to choose from. So you want to stand out just enough that they're going to be like, oh, I'd much rather watch this video about fourth wing. But also like if you do things that are super obscure, like, pff, I don't know, talk about all the Dragon Age books and how they, you know, connect to the games and if their lore is correct and canon and makes sense and stuff, which is totally not a video that I've thought about doing a million times. Um, if you do super obscure stuff, people aren't going to see it. People aren't going to care. People aren't going to notice. But you just also can't be just... And I, I hate to do like everyone else because, like, everyone is unique in their own way. But you don't also want to be just too hive mind -y. Ooh, that I also don't feel like that's great. But you, the point's still there. So what are some fun and unique things that I bring to BookTube? Uh... <laughs> My personality, of course, obviously, I am the most fun and unique thing about this channel. And honestly, <laughs> I think that's the only thing I can say. I like to believe that sometimes I have different ideas than uh, the popular people and that will appeal to some people, but at the same time, you know, it's also kind of a struggle. And, uh... I really might make that lore video about Dragon Age. So if you play Dragon Age and you want to know if multimedia in video games helps the video game experience, let me know because I'm really interested in interested interested in things like that because I've read Dragon Age books, seen the anime, read the comics. I've done close to the same amount of stuff with Cyberpunk. It's not nearly as much, but I've read the book, I watched the anime, I played the game. And I want to see if those experiences, do I experience the game differently now that I've read the books and watched the animes? Or is the game not really benefited by it? And if it's not benefited by it, then is it worth making multimedia content? Anyways, it's just something. I've had that on my mind for a while now. So... If you want to see that, let me know. Um, I'm just excited to sit here and talk about things. I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things to do is just to sit and talk about things and to be in a space where like, obviously no one's going to be like, that's stupid. I mean, people might in the comments, but like here. In my apartment, mm -mm. no one will be saying anything like anything being stupid because they can't. Because there's nobody here. <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm just excited just to make stuff, to talk about stuff, to tell you what I thought about books and maybe one day video games or anything like that. I don't know. I'm just excited to just, just to hang out. It's just, it's just time to hang out. I love reading because, and in this, this, we just talked about being unique and this is totally not a unique answer, but it's the form of escapism and I'm not going to be too Debbie Downer, but like, there's a lot about my life that I, you know, wish was different. And, uh, yeah, I wish there were dragons and I wish I could have a cool sword and I wish that, you know, elves and fairies and mermaids. I wish they all existed. I'd totally be a mermaid, by the way. In any fantasy world, mermaid. 100%.
no doubt in my mind. And I, you know, my life sometimes is so dull compared to Feyre's, Bryce, Inej, Nina, Jude, any of these wonderful characters. And I just, I really like just being in their spot for a little bit and seeing the world through their eyes and just pretending to be them for a little bit. And that's, that's really why I love reading. I love, it's just escapism. So it was the Six of Cards book. I don't have it with me. It's currently in England with my boyfriend. Um, but I do have Cricket Kingdom with me. So the Six of Crows duology definitely got me into reading. And it was a wonderful and weird experience getting into Six of Crows. Um, I had, I think I had decided I wanted to read a book. Like I had been just in the mood for a book and I was living with a really young girly winter at the time and she talked about books a lot which I loved and so I finally took a chance and read Six of Crows and it changed my life it absolutely changed my life and I I, I never got over it and so the first year she showed me Six of Crows I don't actually think I read that much I think that was in 2020 and I think that's when I graduated so at the end of 2020 I graduated and then I moved out pretty soon after and I don't remember reading a whole lot in 2021 I hadn't started tracking books yet and like I don't really know what I read in 2021 um that like really got me back into it. It might have been the like Dragon Age books. Um, but what got me like really into reading was the Folk of the Air series. This series was the first time I had ever read books in a short amount of time. And so I read the first book, I think in a couple days, and then I read the second book also in a couple days. But this third book, I had finished the second book and then immediately read the third book and finished this book an entire day. And this was the first time that has happened to me. So this series got me into like speed reading almost, like really, really into reading. And then I read Crescent City, which got me into like adult fantasy. Before this, I would only I was only reading young adult fantasy. So then I started reading Crescent City, which really got me into adult fantasy. And I love this book to death. And it's just <sighs> there will never be another book like Crescent City, in my opinion. And then this was um, another five star book that, that I gave that I read this book in the month that I read 10 books. So this book also, it was really Akatar, but this one's the good one that really got me into reading more than like four books a month. Because that was kind of like I had read two in January and then I think maybe four in February, but in April I read 10 and this was part of it. So this also got me into like reading a ton, a ton, a ton. So those are my different levels of reading. I think I would ask my favorite YouTubers how they determine what videos to make and how they schedule it out and how long in advance do they record those videos before putting them out? So right now, it is currently Tuesday. This video will be out on Thursday. In two days from now, this video is going to be on YouTube. So do people like Carrie Can Read or Layla and Books or Book Roast or Just Alley 
do they, <laughs> like, if, if they were making this video, would they have made it months ago and it's just now coming out? Or do they also record, like, week of or a couple weeks in advance? And how they kind of, how do they script their videos? How do they determine what they're going to say? Is it just bullet points? Do they write out a formal script? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going through a new development in my booktube ways of making videos, I guess. And I am doing Google Sheets, Google Docs, speech to text. And I, just one day. Um, I did it halfway for this and then I ran out of time so I didn't get to finish it. Um, but yeah, I just sit at my computer and I go, okay, this is kind of what I want to say during the video. And I do a mock video. And now here we are. And so next week I will have, a, it will fully be fully mocked before I go in. And I actually, I did learn this from Carrie Can Read. Uh, she did one of her reading wrap ups where she said that she normally does a mock video and then she'll take out parts she doesn't want to mention or she'll add in parts that she forgot and then she goes along with the script. But yeah, just this question is just kind of <laughs> the fundamentals, like how do you do the fundamentals of your video? Other than obviously breaking the barrier of becoming a famous booktuber, um, I think the hardest challenge is just going to be content for me. What do I want to talk about? Because I feel like it's so difficult to, like I have this list of video ideas, but it all requires to read like certain books and I am a mood reader. And so I do sometimes just not want to read those books. But the problem is, is if I don't read those books, well, then what am I going to talk about? And I don't want to talk a whole lot about things that people have already talked about. Because as much as I said earlier that this YouTube channel is still just like it's a passion project. Obviously, I want it to be successful and successful on YouTube is getting a lot of views and things like that. So the videos I need to talk about need to be popular enough that people would probably want to watch them and not so obscure that like people are going to be like who the cares but also not so popular <laughs> where everyone's like well I've already seen 10 other people do this I'm not going to watch this random girl do it which is the problem with being unique and the problem I'm having right now <laughs> so I, I just yeah I think the biggest challenge to overcome is just what kind of content do I want to make what kind of things do I want people to see what am I going to talk about every week? It's yeah, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a struggle, but I'm, I'm learning. I am getting kind of used to it. And yeah, I'm determining what I think, what I think is good content versus not good content. I had like a video idea and I started recording it and I was like, this is not good. And I ended it right there. So yeah, content. I guess I technically already mentioned it earlier. I read Six of Crows, I believe, in December of 2020. And then I don't really know what I read in 2021. But what I consider my like, I started reading was 2022. That was the first month I read or the first year that I read 18 books. And for me, that was crazy. I'm now at 71 for this year, but yeah, reading 18 books for that year was insane. My goal was 12. Sorry, no, that's not true. I read 15 books in 2022 and my goal was 12. And you know what pushed me over the edge? The Air of the Folk series, it, it got me over there. Um, and Crescent City, which is now sitting under A Court of Mist and Fury. Um, so yeah, I officially start count my like starting reading was uh 2022 because I really don't know what I read in 2021 I'm sure I put it on my goodreads so I could look actually let's look yeah so yeah it looks like in 2021 I read Crooked Kingdom and then the first two Shadow and Bone books and also the first Dragon Age book that was all I read in 2021 so yeah, I don't, I mean, like, I guess I did start reading, but it was, it was pretty much just 
Lee Bardugo and one Dragon Age book, and that's it. Um, if we're gonna be honest here, I mostly read at my desk at work or my desk in my bedroom or on Saturday at my Saturday job. But that's, I'm, I'm, I'm really allowed to read there. <laughs> Um, usually at a desk, I like being able to kind of prop my elbows up while I read. Um, I have my Kindle that I mostly use. Uh, lately I've been reading The Malevolent Seven, uh, by Sebastian, Sebastian de Cristel, I think? Yeah, Sebastian de Castel. And I've been reading that in bed, uh, but I don't really like it. It's mostly just, I have kittens now, um, and they like to sit on my computer chair. So I like I like to let them have their computer chair time. And then I lay in bed, <laughs> which is just, I don't like reading in bed because um, my arms get really tired. So if a physical book, not so fun in bed. I'll read a Kindle in bed. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mostly read at my desk. At work. <laughs> uh, don't, don't tell my boss, guys. You gotta, that's a secret. He's, they're not allowed to know. <laughs> My favorite genre, I would have to say, is romanticy. I'm starting to kind of, with this year and reading as many books that I've read, I'm starting to kind of definitely agree that romanticy is my favorite series, um, but I can read more than just romanticy. I think a book is usually better with a romance involved, but I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of just pure romance books. I'm a little iffy on those. It depends on, like, what's going on in the background. Um, I know there's a spectrum of, like, romanticy. Um, I would like to believe I'm kind of in the middle, but I definitely... My ideal romanticy book is the two Sarah J. Mass books that I pulled out earlier. So, A Court of Mist and Fury. And, sorry, my AC just turned on. I'm sure you can hear it and Crescent City. There is enough fantasy in this to keep it kind of interesting. The world's interesting, but there's also enough romance in it that I'm like, yes, please. Um, I do like smut. I'll say it. I like smut. I like the way Sarah J. Maslow writes smut. Who cares? Uh, but if there's not going to be a whole lot of romance, or if the romance subplot is put to the side, then there has to be enough action that I'm interested in what's going on. I've kind of been stuck on a few books lately where I just feel like nothing is happening and like it's great that we're learning about this person's day-to-day -day life. Really cool, but I just wish there was more going on. And so I need a little bit of action. Um, I've only really read one non-fiction book, so I don't really have much to say about those. But yeah, definitely fiction, fantasy, romance, girly. I do like murder. Um, that's what, That was one of my favorite things about Crescent City, is it was a murder mystery plus fantasy plus romance. Like, that was my kind of... I loved that. Um, my thing about murder mysteries, though, is I will never be the one to figure out who it is before it happens. Except for, I guess, I did in Truly Devious, so... <laughs> Um, but usually, no, I have no idea. And I have to be in the mood for a murder mystery. Um, if I'm not in the mood to read one, I will find it pretty boring. It also depends on, like, kind of how interesting, like, the murder is. Serial killers? Really into them. Extra murder, extra fun. Uh, but yeah, so if I had to give one genre, romanticy, which is technically two, but everyone knows, romanticy. It looks like this. And let me go ahead and get out of the way and then you guys can see the whole thing. That is my whole book collection, sort of. I do have a brown bookshelf that is over on that side that you cannot see. But most of those books are just books I got from my late Uncle Bob's house and kind of just books I've had for a really long time. So kind of not super like important books. 
But yeah, you can see <laughs> a few holes. I'm still gaining some. But yeah, this is my book collection as of right now. My physical book collection. I have way more books on Kindle. So yeah. There. All right, and that was the last question of the video. So I hope you guys kind of learned a little something about me and kind of my book experience. And if not, then sorry you watched this whole video for nothing. Um, I'm really excited for next week's video. It's going to be a TBR video for November and December because I'm doing the clear your shit readathon and this bad boy has got so many books on it. I'm reading so many physical books over the next two months. It's very exciting. Um, I do have two physical books on here already that I need to read. Um, yes, very excited for next week's video. And then I have a couple of videos planned over the next couple of weeks that I'm also really excited about. So I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, that's kind of it. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.